Kristen, Codefellows, what is that? Codefellows is a software development trade school based here out of Seattle. We basically make more software developers, but if I go slightly more into it, we take people who've been trying to learn how to code and actually transform them into professionals. Really? Well, Bill Gates talks about how everybody should learn how to code, and I think he's looking at it from an 11-year-old standpoint, too. Is that right? Should everybody learn how to code? It is the new literacy, we believe. Um, we are in a transition period now where not everybody's learned how to code, at least not in the same way. But yes, software and technology is becoming an enabler for every kind of industry. It's no longer just relegated to the tech industry. It's healthcare, it's agriculture, it's supply chain and logistics. So pretty much everywhere you go, you're going to need to have technical skills, and coding early on is the way to get us all uh, innovating and, and contributing the value that, that we'll need in the, in the future. You know, I don't know if everybody out there understands. I'm not even sure I even understand what you mean when you say everybody should learn how to code. That's a really good question, actually. Um, you know, I think that there are a lot of different uh, of ways of doing it. So if you think about learning math, we all sort of learn basic math and it helps us get through things like paying a bill at a restaurant or uh, you know, slightly higher level as you're doing things uh, with your own personal finance. And that's enough for a lot of people is to learn the basic math skills that you need to get through life. Um, but there are people that take that way further, right? And they use math as a focus in their, their roles and the, the corporate jobs that they have and where they're creating uh, value for companies. And I think that software is going to be the same way. It's no longer going to be the case that uh, computer skills and software development is going to be you know, kind of a, a siloed piece of, of the, the universe. Uh, we're all going to have skills like that that will help us get through our daily lives. So you don't like the way that your uh, lights are coming on when you come home. You will actually go and learn how to you know, manipulate that and code and create you know, the, the, the situation that you want. This will be part of our daily lives in the future. However, there will be people who will also uh, be really focused on that in their careers. And these will be the creators, the people who are innovating in the technologies we're using to code, who are going to be creating value and, and focused on those. And so there's going to be these varying levels of using software development in, in our lives, and, and education will sort of reflect that. So if, if I'm watching this, and let's say that I'm 22 years old and I'm a uh, junior in college, we'll just say that. Uh, and I'm hearing what you're having to say, um, I'm thinking, okay, what's in it for me? I'm, you know, I've already been in school forever. <laughs> right, yeah, uh, absolutely. I think, you know, time will tell exactly what this looks like. I think it will be, again, part of what you do, regardless of whether it's your focus. But if you look at it today, there's not much else that you can graduate at 22, 23 years old and be nearly guaranteed to make nearly six figures as you get out of school. These are now one of the, I'm listening. Yes, this is one of the most uh, lucrative majors that you can have in school. I think the only thing that is consistently higher is chemical engineering, so another STEM field. But you know that I think the average software, de average CS major makes uh, seventy three, seventy four thousand dollars a year when they step off of campus in their first wow. jobs. Well, how about a forty year old who, who uh, isn't really happy in <clears throat> his or her job? Yeah, and that's where we come in. We take people who uh, want to change their lives, uh, no matter what their age is, and they help. We help them bridge. That, um, that gap between where they are and becoming a software developer. And so we've been able to help many people change their lives. And, and technology is great. It's something that's learnable. It's something that changes every day, so nobody's an expert for long. So we're all, we all learn how to learn. And then it's something that um, is, is more of a meritocracy than a lot of other things. People can look at your code. They can see how you do what you do, and they can evaluate your skills off of that. So the degree doesn't have to be the the, the sort of barometer of how good you are at your skill. You know, it's interesting that you say that. You say that it's it's all about your skill. It's all they can look at your code, but it's been mostly a boys' club for a while. It has. It looks like it's changing. It is. It is changing, though probably not fast enough. Uh, when we go back and you look at computer science, it was dominated by women until about 1984, and there have been a lot of hypotheses about why that has changed, but it's dropped dramatically. And in every piece of the funnel between uh, interest to uh, professional uh, life and promotion, each one of those, each of the steps in between 
is sort of a leaky funnel. And there, there are a lot of things I think that we need to do to continue to accelerate the, um, the diversity in the workforce and leadership of technology and specifically in software development. Let's look ahead five years. Um, what do you think the, the field of, of technology, of coding, especially for women, what do you think it's gonna look like? Oh wow! I, you know, I think it's, it's so hard. The the great thing about being in technology is that it really does change all the time. But I think as we have more and more people who are innovating, and that technology itself allows us to innovate very quickly, um, we're going to have many, many more options to bring more and more people in. So it's no longer the case that you have to have a big mainframe computer, or you have to have a fantastic lab. You know, we're able to code on our phones now, and so I think that accessibility. The, the sort of barriers to getting into it. The fact that we have wonderful organizations like Code.org that are trying to change the system from kindergarten. We have, uh, they have, we have them doing code, uh, the Hour of Code. We have them partnering with Disney to make Elsa and Anna uh, you know, be a part of software development. And we're, we're sort of getting in there early, I think. But we're going to see that you know, even though it's going to be an uphill battle, we're going to see a lot more diversity, um, you know, down the road. And I think none of us can probably imagine exactly what it's going to look like, but it's going to be an exciting ride. Kristen Smith, thank you for being with us. Absolutely, thank you.